April 4th, I know it has come and passed. And April 4th, a lot of people, particularly like in the black community, not just here in Liberty City, but everywhere else, has always hold a commemorative memory. That was the day that uh, held the infamy in 1968 on that day. And in this month that, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated and uh, was killed right there at the Lorraine Motel in Tennessee, in Memphis. That right there, that, that place in history will ever hold a place in my memory for a very, very, very long time. Um, you know, cause I came, I came along, my exception came along several months after that. And it was one of the things that I always, I learned when I was little about, you know, and just like everybody else, I was thinking like the killer was James Earl Ray, you know, alone, a white man and, um, who was responsible for murdering King. But you know, over the years, like 25 years later after that, through DNA evidence and through the other children, like, you know, that it couldn't have been, been James Earl Ray, according to King's children. Um, because they say that he was nothing more than just a patsy, you know, so, a lot of people have decided to go ahead and dig a lot deeper on um, who was responsible for, for murdering Dr. Dr. King. And a lot of people I have their theories, myself included. And, you know, like I said, I still stick by it and all that stuff. I say I believe it was, you know, Gay Edgar Hoover, along with the FBI and all that stuff. They took him out. But it goes a lot more deeper than that. My thing about it is who set the whole thing up, which brings me to him. Y'all know him, Jesse Jackson, the so-called Reverend Jesse Jackson. We call him down here, Messy Jesse. You know. Now to all the 90 babies and all the millennials, y'all think he's this great civil rights icon and so on and so forth that you know that he stood beside Dr. King and all this other blah 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 this and that well I'm here to go ahead to break your bubble Jesse Jackson is not who y'all think he is okay Jesse Jackson to me as I was coming up during my adolescent years and late late adolescent, early 20s and stuff like that, I had come across several types of information that led to it. Um, and one of my master teachers, uh, the late, great Steve Coakley, shout out to Steve Coakley, basically brought, brought it all to light. For you see, with, with Jesse Jackson, this is the man here who was responsible for setting up Martin Luther King to get Dr. King to get assassinated that day. Because look at all the scandals that Jesse Jackson was involved in. You know. Particularly like in 2000 during the uh, presidential election. Yes, unfortunately my home state of Florida was involved in that majorly. You know. And despite the idiocracy and the, the racist vitriol that comes from out of uh, Fox Loose or Fox Loose about saying, oh, did Jesse Jackson and Hal Sharpton, they just be race baiting and the stuff like that. Well, that might be, well, that holds a little truth to him, and I ain't gonna lie. I'm not gonna argue about it because guess what? Those two, these two charlatans, have always for years have profit uh, off of off of racial tirades and so on and so forth. You know. Remember, this the same Jesse Jackson that in 2012 that he he tried to have everybody going to a frenzy down here in Central Florida and Sanford 
uh, referring to Trayvon Martin as being like a martyr. You know, I say this maniac about to get out here and stop and, and try to stir something up just to get compensated. Because, see, Jesse Jackson is not going to show up anywhere unless he gets something out of it. Now, I could recall a story that happened back way back somewhere in the 70s according to one of my master teachers uh, the late C. Freeman Ill may he rise in power along with Steve Coakley um, that Jesse Jackson hit up Coca-Cola uh, for like a million over a million dollars got a million dollars out of him he robbed them for like a million dollars and he did it without a gun all because he told those the big wigs at Coca-Cola that, you know, they said some stereotypes about when it come down to black people drinking soda and Jesse told them, all right, just for that, we ain't gonna have black people, I just won't have black people buy Coca-Cola no more. Which you shouldn't be buying it anyway because, you know, because that soda basically is little traces of cocaine in it. But, I digress. Jesse Jackson have always suspected like the young the young people that was born in the 90s and early 2000s y'all wouldn't know you have to ask some of the OGs that's back from late 50s through the 60s and and throughout the early 70s they'll tell you about the messy Jesse now you don't want to ask yourself what does this have to do with him and Dr. King well I tell you like this. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it like in perspective, as such. As I switch to you right here. Now this was at the Lorraine Motel. Now, as Steve Coakley would put it, you can find that you can find that that um that video, the document, the documentary lecture on YouTube, if they haven't taken it down about how Jesse Jackson helped set up Martin Luther King to get killed. Now, as you can see, one of the things Coakley said, stated, that Jesse sent the code word to the hit squad, yes, a hit squad, to take out our brother Martin Luther King. But I'm going to tell you something about this, about this whole thing too. And Jesse said the code word to those guys that friendlies won't be wearing ties. Now, look at the picture you see right here. You see Ralph Abernathy right here. Martin Luther King's best friend. The man who was going to be next in line. Not this motherfucker. Okay? Ralph Abernathy wearing a tie. Martin was forced to, forced to wear a tie, and he didn't. Andy Young wore a tie. Everybody wore ties. Jesse didn't wear no tie. Now, if you're going like into a formal function... Or whatever like that wouldn't it make sense to go ahead to wear a tie instead of some uh olive green turtleneck um shirt because the killer or killers per se were according to several sources and i truly believe this and according to what coakley had put so beautifully that these were the same ones who was also responsible for um, murdering, assassinating uh, JFK. The same ones that assassinated JFK were the same ones that came around and killed Doc, uh, came around for the King, for the King assassination. And it happened right there, April 4th, 1968, Lorraine Motel. And see, here's something else that was something odd about that too. Brother Martin, the, the assassin, shot him with a 30 R6. King's hotel room number was 306. See the correlation there? Now, I ain't got the pictures up here to go ahead and show it, but this is just goes to show it right there. Because everybody remember that speech that was on... Um, that, that King did the day before, the night before, 
he did in Tennessee and Memphis. That was the one where a woman came and stabbed him, and he said at the end that, you know, my eyes, I've been to the mountaintop, my eyes have seen the glory, and so on like that. Those were cold words. See, King, like like uh, Blankston Hughes, like uh, several others, see, they were part of the, King was part of the boule. This is what I'm getting at. Boule was a, 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 a black black fraternity society that's based off the um, that came off the creation of the skull and bones because boule means like advisor to the king they were the circle that protected the circle within the circle Martin King was boule Langston Hughes was boule W.E.B. Du Bois boule you know they're still around shoot I, had, I even came across some of them uh, a while back you know Everybody else was thinking when that they seen it on there that it was just like oh it's just a fraternity and stuff like that. They didn't even know the meaning of it. And I just kind of laughed, you know. And see the thing with Boulay, you know, um, their job is basically once to start just keep things domestic. And see Martin was also part of the, of that Big Six, the original Big Six, him. John Lewis, who's still alive today, Philip Farmer, William Rand, A. William Randolph, Whitney Young, and um, and of course, yeah, along with those like um, Ray Wilkins, Whitney Young, Philip A. Randolph, James Farmer, John Lewis, and of course Martin King. As Malcolm put him, he called them the original Big Six. That was the Big Six. You know, and they were backed by some of the most powerful uh, white-owned financial institutions in the country, if not the world. Because, you know, King was like totally a contrast to his mentor, which was Dr. Vernon Johns, you know. Because like the integration and all this stuff like that, and you find King realized that job didn't work. And that's when he said, like, you know, I think I sent my people into a burning house. Because, like I, I tell anybody, integration was probably the worst thing that could happen to us as a people. It wasn't about equality. It was about economic compensation. Because, because as long as back then we kept our money within our communities and, and kept circulating our dollars within our communities and stuff. And, you know, white folks can't stand it. They still can't stand that to this day. You know what I'm saying? But even right now, the majority of us, um, we're like every time we get money, we want to go ahead and spend it with everybody else. But we don't want to spend it here. But according, but in, in total contradiction to some of my colleagues that's basically on social media, particularly Facebook and everywhere else, um, that paradigm is already shifting. But the thing is about it, when King, after the march on Washington, and a lot of things didn't go like that. That's when King started speaking about the poverty, uh, inequality of many black people. And he also spoke up for a lot of people, other different nationalities, melanated people of color. When he talked about with Puerto Ricans, he talked about so-called uh, Native Americans, the Asians, and everybody else like that. And he started speaking out against the Vietnam War and stuff like that. Right there, he broke the code because you being as boule, you're, you're supposed to be about domestic. You never step out the box being foreign. And that's why the Smith campaign had happened with King with the thing with Gay Edgar Hoover calling King a liar and King referring to him as a racist. And they bumping heads, both for Capricorns, both for stubborn, both for very stern. And that's when King went to go see Hoover face to face in the office and King came back out with that shock look on his face because the faggot, the red racist faggot turned up turned out and had some videotape of King having um extramarital affairs with other women. Through no fault of his own, because at the end of the day, look man, he, he's a man. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't realize a lot of women used to basically used to throw themselves at, at Dr. King and his aides and stuff had to go ahead and try to fight a lot of them women off. But the thing about that, you know, sooner or later on one night, you know, he kind of succumbed and gave it to his lower self.
and all that, you know, you can't keep his word to himself for much longer. But like I said, he's a man. He only got needs. Because see, that's the one part about Martin Luther King, one one part they don't talk they don't teach our kids in school about that. Just like they don't teach our kids in school about the Martin Luther King when he was about to make the uh, the shift about how he met up with Elijah Muhammad about the part where Martin, Martin Luther King tried to purchase uh, get a concealed weapons permit so he can carry a handgun because death threats were being made against his life. And when he met up with Malcolm and he was going to go the same route Malcolm was going to go. They don't want to teach our kids that. In, in, in schools they only want to teach the Martin Luther King that's passive and docile therefore they could make our children psychologically passive and docile or as my, one of my homeboys called domesticated you know a typical one on one tactic of white, out of the white supremacy playbook or the global white supremacy playbook but let me get on into this so somehow the white supremacists decide to plant this into King's little crew. Now King really never people don't understand this. Now Je they tell you like this, well Jesse was the heir apparent to King. He was nesting lying. No the fuck he wasn't. No the hell he wasn't. Because see King never trusted Jesse. Never trusted him. He knew something odd was about Jesse from the get-go because Jesse was doing some real off-the-wall type stuff. And I think King caught him at one time. And King told him in his face, you ever pull a stunt like that again, it's going to be a problem. Because people got to keep in line. Because, like I said before earlier in this video, King uh, Jesse, Messy Jesse was never the next one in line. Ralph Abernathy was. That was his best friend. Okay, now I wish I had the video, but I'm gonna put that link up in the description, uh, in the description, so y'all can view the video for yourself with the audio and see for yourself. When King, when Dr. King made that speech, um, that night, that's when that's when that woman had stabbed him, and when he was saying, when he was saying that you know we're gonna have some difficulties ahead. I may not get there with you. I've already been to the mountaintop. Right there, he broke the code. Okay? Because keep in mind, Martin was also a mason too. You know? I've, I've been to the mountaintop. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. See, he knew he was going to die. And then when you see him, when he goes sit down, you know, Jesse right there and... All the other people right there, Jose Williams, Andy, and Ralph Abernathy. He went toward Ralph Abernathy. And he even said before he died, he said his best friend in the whole wide, wide world was Ralph Abernathy. Now, how King suspected that Jesse was an agent, that was, it was going to be that night. After he said that, he broke code, he was going to reveal to the world that Jesse Jackson, yeah, is was an agent. And Jesse gave, gave the call sent the signal to the hit squad yo we got to move now and that's when that same time he also said friendlies uh will be wearing won't be wearing ties look at the picture jesse's not wearing a tie martin's wearing a tie and so is abernathy and like when king got shot and you know he fell this motherfucker he told you that I was the one, last one that spoke to him before he died, which he wasn't because, see, the person that caught him was Ralph Abernathy when King fell, okay? Jesse came up, you, you see your homeboy, you just got hurt and he, you see him fall down due to something ill or whatever like that, you are not going to go up the opposite staircase to go reach him. You're going to go to the quickest one to go, to go see to your mans. And just like what Ralph Abernathy did, Jesse came up, wasn't even nowhere up there when that happened. Okay? He hid behind a pool. And then he came up the opposite staircase when the shots rang out. And Tom I saying, here's where the lie come in at. And he talked about saying that um that you know I held them in my arms and all this. 
and he spoke to me before he died. I'm going I'm to debunk that right now. Jesse never touched him. Ralph was the first one to catch him. Jose Williams knew it. And Jose Williams confronted Jesse after Jesse told that lie on the Today Show. How he got there, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to get to that in a second. Because Jesse, Jesse never touched him. Andy Young even said, instead of Jesse going, never touched him, you know what he did? The most vilest thing I've ever heard of a so-called human. And I don't even consider Jesse human. Jesse came up the opposite stairs and he didn't instead of doing that he put his hands in Martin's blood and smeared it on his on the olive green turtleneck sh uh, shirt that's what he wearing right there now when that shit read out the FBI locked it well during that time the FBI locked everything down they locked no buses no airports no planes were to fly in and out only one plane flew out out of Memphis that day. Jesse was on his way on his way to Chicago on the Today Show, and he wore that same olive green turtleneck shirt with King blood on it, telling people like, "This is Dr. King's blood." When I helped them in my arm, how you hold somebody in your arms and you say you never touched them? There's so many documentaries out on this. It's even a book out by a European by the name of Kenneth Tim uh, Timmerman called Shakedown, Exposing the Real Jesse Jackson. I mean, you know, because King was going to reveal to the world he was going to expose Jack Jesse Jackson as an agent, you know. I mean, it, it was a lot of emotions. I mean, you had riots nationwide um, after King got got killed. Um, I remember Hosea Williams after watching it. He was so mad. All you all you heard Hosea Williams was saying on there on the document when I watched it. He said, "Man, I just wanted to go ahead and pull pull out, bring down, just grab some protons and neutrons and electrons and." And stuff. I just wanted to make me a gun, and he just wanted to start killing white folks. But the killer or killers, or the same, the, the ones who killed King, they were the same ones who was also responsible for killing JFK. The same ones. Now you can call me a conspiracy theorist all you want, but it is what it is. But see, King broke code. And you know, you say he been to the mountaintop. Yeah, he broke the code. That signal is death. And that's the only that's punishable by death, unfortunately. And this motherfucker helped him do it. Because after that, a few months after Jesse left and he came back in April, about a couple few years later, talking about saying he was ready for leadership. So he was ready to take over the organization, which was SNCC, which I forgot the name of the organization, so I apologize, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm just saying this at the top of my, off the top of my head. You know, Jesse was sixth in the order. He was never next in line to be King's apparent, heir apparent. This man was, okay? This man was. Jesse Jackson, for the past 30, damn near 40 some years has lied, cheats, still hustled his way to a lot of stuff. If, as long as money was involved. I still remember when he came here during the Ileon Gonzalez thing. He was talking about wanting to try to help the Cuban. It, you know, I said, for what? You know, I bet you it wasn't even money involved. Because if I'm lying about, about with Jesse Jackson, I know it's going to be some people that's going to come in the comment sections with their bullshit about them. But the fact speaks for themselves. I'll leave a link down in the description for the book you can get. Or you can go to YouTube right now and type in Steve Coakley, Jesse Jackson. And he, you'll see why. 
okay? Steve Coakley know how this motherfucker is. Because, you know, Steve Coakley, he from Chicago. He from Chicago, too. Although Jesse from South Carolina, but his, but his, most of his district and business dealings was up in Chi Town. All my people's in, in the shot, they know how this fool is, okay? He's also probably was responsible for setting up Jeff Fort and the Blackstone Rangers, too. I don't put nothing past him or Reverend Al. It's ironic. Both of those guys are called reverends, and neither one of them don't have a congregation. Typical. So as far as I'm concerned with Jesse Jackson, like this sister here, I feel the same exact way, and that's putting it straight to the point. Why do you think the brothers and sisters down there in Ferguson ran his ass up out of Ferguson? Because they know he about that bullshit. They know he just about, about just getting money. He ain't concerned about helping us and stuff. You got to understand, a lot of these guys, you know, helped assassinate our some of our prominent people and stuff like that who paid the way, like Dr. King, like Malcolm, like Elijah Muhammad, Noble Drew Ali, Marcus Garvey, I mean, several others, you know. So, as far as I'm concerned, like, you know, I could never forget what forget that, you know, that's why we're April 4th was one of the hot, um, 1968 was one of the hardest I've ever seen, because shortly after JFK, shortly after Martin, you know, they turned around and they killed, killed Robert Kennedy too, you know, Manchurian candidate, Sirhan Sirhan, you know, that sort of thing, so, you know, People like like this guy, like like Jesse Jack, Messy Jesse, and Al Sharpton. Man, look here. Do not black people. Please do not start taking people like this or either these white supremacists who come with with a liberal mindset because you know a lot of them liberals are white supremacists too. You know, he's in the back pocket of these jokers. He's in the back pockets of them. Long as he getting bread. Because look at it like this. Why do you think his son is already sitting in jail now? Apple don't fall far from the tree. So, in the famous words of Cedric Entertainer's character on Barbershop, um, who played Eddie, the first one, and fuck Jesse Jackson, Michael, and Tito, and the rest of them <laughs> like that. <laughs> you know. But I'm going to leave a link in the description for all that, for the book too, and for, and for the videos. And you guys look up Steve Coakley, you know what I'm saying? Coakley put this fool out here on blast. And see, on top of that, and honors also go out because see, how even more proof that people don't want to believe that Jesse had a hand in assassinating Martin Luther King, all you had to do was just look at look, uh, Coretta. You look at the video where it showed where Coretta was, when they were carrying King's body, Coretta was walking in front, Jesse behind her. I mean, no, Jesse was in front. I'm sorry, Jesse was in front. Coretta was right there beside her, uh, the the carriage that was carrying her hook, carrying Martin. And she looked, he looked back at Coretta, and Coretta, Coretta looked another way because she knew Jesse had a hand in there. She carried that with her to her grave, unfortunately since 1968 so Je Jesse Jackson fuck you you helped kill, kill one of the greatest men that ever lived you know you never was for us and never was you, you just see your little uh, racist ideologies and stuff like not really racist but you know you look at some race race type thing and then just try to use it as a hustle just to go ahead for profit because remember I talked to this about this with with, um, with several of my colleagues and stuff about when it come down to that ism which is man made and racism is profitable and this is part of it right there so like this sister doing Jesse Jackson fuck you